I have created this workflow within it and to analyze the performance of my websites. And before we will have a look into the nodes itself, I would like to show you the output. And as you can see, it's an HTML file and it includes, of course, HTML to display everything, CSS to style it, and also JavaScript to add kind of more functionalities to it. For instance, like filtering, exporting the data, and also like this effect and so on. And the first part it does is analyzing the overall traffic. So here we can see, by the way, it's real data. The only thing I have changed is um, I removed the keywords as well as the domain. But the data itself is from a real website. And as you can see, we have here kind of a meta bar that we can see. I have created the report on this date and I am comparing two periods. So it's really similar. Um, if you would go to the Google Search Console and let's say you compare the last three months with the three months prior to that, except that you can also configure it here or in other words in the workflow. And as you can see, we have the overall traffic. So we have like roughly 15K clicks in the last period and we had roughly 18,000 clicks in the period before. So here we can directly see that that we love 15% in clicks, similar to the impressions, average position, as well as the click through rate. And then we have it also for devices so that you can see if you are like performing really well um, based on the device or even not. So we can see like since the AI overview is rolling out, everything looks kind of bad, but at least it gives us a transparency that we are like performing in general a little bit worse than before. And not only for a specific device, because imagine you are performing well on desktop, but for some reason your clicks, impressions and so on are getting lower and lower over time, then it might be possible that you have kind of some technical issues. Let's say the page speed is really low or your website is not optimized for mobile devices in general. The same applies for the tablet device. And then we can also check the traffic by country. So for instance, if you have a website, which is in English or in general in any language that targets more countries, then you can also analyze it here. For instance, this website is primarily for a German audience and it also contains a few articles in English. So I could say, okay, I want to see the desktop performance for Germany. And then I have a single row, which makes sense because we have like set a filter for the country as well as for the device. And then we can see like the clicks change is roughly 9%. We have the previous and current impressions as well as the clicks. And let's say we want to have the performance for every device. Then we can click here on all devices and then we can see that the Impression got kind of a little bit better for desktop tablet, but definitely worse for mobile. And in case you want to analyze it even further, you could also export the data as a CSV file and upload it somewhere else. Another part is the keyword position distribution. So it does not has anything to do with keyword tracking, but it checks based on thresholds for the click per rate, as well as for the impressions for how many keywords are you ranking in the top three, then in the brackets four to 10, 11 to 20 and below 20. So this would be something that the user can see immediately. Then for the position four to 10, they have to scroll down a little bit. And this would be the second page and everything after that would be below top 20. Of course, it depends if you have a query where there are a lot of ads, the AI overview or products, then top three does not mean that you are immediately visible if someone is going to search for something. Another important part is the keyword ranking movement. So here we can see, for instance, let's say all movements. We have in general entered top three, dropped from the top three, stayed in top three, and also stayed in the top 10. That means we can see the first date and last date. So I was ranking for this keyword in Germany with this article on this date at the average of 7.3. And the last available date was position three. So here I was able to enter the top three results with a page. But of course, you can also check if you dropped. I was ranking for this keyword also in Germany for a given article on the top result. And then I lost in total roughly six positions, which also means that I dropped from the top three. And the last part is the performance by pages, which is, in my opinion, next to the keyword movement, one of the crucial parts, because this table shows you exactly which pages are performing and which are also not performing, which might be interesting for optimization. That means I could check either for top performer. Let's say you have an article and you see, okay, I'm getting more clicks than before. So for instance, here, 
I had in the last period 240 clicks and in the period before only 175, which is an increase of roughly 37%. And imagine this is an article which targets transaction keywords, and you could update this article, add affiliate links, or even use this article to update your internal linking to try to bring the traffic from let's say an informational page to a page where someone's going to buy something or in general where you want to lead the traffic to. Or you can also check for the low performer, which might be interesting because if we have a look into the traffic performance, then we can see that it's kind of negative. So 15% less clicks than before and also roughly 9% less impressions. That means some pages are getting less clicks and in general the visibility is worse than before. That means we need to figure out which pages are the ones that we need to update. And this is what the performance by pages table does. So here we can see this page is categorized as a low performer because the click change is definitely not good. And we lost compared to the period before roughly 47% in clicks, which you can also see here. So the last period we got like 669 and then it was 657, which, which is an indicator that this page needs to be updated. Regarding the categorization, we have top performer. So that means a page is getting more clicks than before. Improved CTR, kind of obvious. So the click through rate is better than before. Improved visibility checks impressions. So if we got more impressions than before, stable if the performance kind of the same as before. So there's like no bad or good trend. And then the same for declining. So we lost a lot of impressions. Click through rate got worse and low performer, as you can see, are pages that got less clicks than before. Apart from that, next to the tables, which all are created dynamically, it's also possible to configure the profile picture here as well as the logo and also the FAF icon. And of course, you can also set the name here as well as the title and company information like the name, address, website, email address, and phone number. Then let's have a look into the workflow itself. And we will start on the left side. There are two ways to trigger it, either by a schedule or by executing it manually. And then the first thing is to get data from the website. So there's a Google Sheet in the background, which looks like this. Here we have the configuration for the report. And for instance, we need the domain. Then we need the two big query tables and also the email if you want to send the report by mail. First name, last name, these values are used to customize the email message. If you want to send the report, then you can enter here yes. If you don't want to send the report, then you can leave it empty. If you want to set someone and copy, then it would be possible here. And here we have min impression threshold as well as the threshold for the click through rate. And these two values are used to calculate the keyword position distribution across the desktop, mobile, and tablet device, and also to figure out for which keywords was the website in the top three, four to 10, and so on. Then the next step is to set some client data. So for instance, we need the domain, um, the two big query tables, as I mentioned, and all the other properties, which are inside the Google Sheet. And then we start a loop. So this workflow works also for multiple websites. So let's say you have another website, you could just copy this line and of course change the domain and the other data here. And this workflow will be then executed for every entry, which is listed here. Another thing I added here is a get last run and also then the get last run in days code note, because whenever this workflow gets executed, it saves data into the run history. So here we can see I executed it today. So, which also here is a date, then it was successfully for the domain Marvematic. And I could also open this one. This includes the zip file, which contains the HTML report. And instead of setting the days which you want to analyze, so let's say you could also set it to always 14, then you would always compare the last two weeks with the two weeks prior to that. But I decided to make it dynamically. So let's say I execute this workflow for this website and five weeks, then it will take this date, calculate the days, and then it will also create a report based on the last time the workflow got executed. The reason why I added here the method to check when was the last time the workflow executed is because I didn't want to have gaps in my analysis, which is important for me because I always like to also execute the workflow manually in case I see in the Google Search Console that the performance got worse then I'm able to have always 
all the data without any gaps. The next thing we do is to get the keywords and countries because we have, as I already showed here, also as a table keyword ranking movement. And this workflow is also capable of checking the keyword rankings for as many keywords as you want to. So for instance, here I am checking for the keyword Marvelmatic as well as keyword tracking report for the countries Germany, USA, and England. And if we have a look into the report, then we can also see it here. We have the keyword ranking movement for Germany, Great Britain, USA, for all pages that are right now ranking for these keywords. By the way, this is also interesting if you want to check if your website is dealing with keyword cannibalization, because here we can also see if multiple pages are ranking for the same keyword, which might be interesting if you are kind of lucky that you are ranking with multiple pages for one keyword in the top results. But let's say one article is an article where someone's going to buy something, so which will make you money in the end of the day. And the other one is an informational article. And most likely you want to rank higher or in general with the article that drives conversion. And this would be easily possible by just checking for the keyword. I mean, now I have just two one, but let's say I want to have all pages that are ranking for the keyword Marvelmatic, and then I could just click export, and then I would be able to analyze it even further. After that, we will merge the data, and then we will start with the analysis of the data, which comes from the bulk data export. I can also show you how the data looks like for the schema of the table. And here we have the search data site impression and we have the date, site URL, query, if the query is anonymized, country, search type, device, end of course impression clicks and the position. And then we have also the search data URL impression, which gives you some insights about how the pages are performing. So for instance, here we can see the majority of the Visibility gets my landing page and also a page where I have some links. And here we have also data like the query, country, search type, device, and even more. And we have also the impression, clicks, and some position. And these big query nodes contain SQL queries to create all the KPIs which are visible here. So for instance, for the overall traffic and the last here we got 78 clicks and then it was 76. And if we have a look into this node, then we can see current clicks, previous clicks, as well as for the impressions, click per weight, and also the delta. Then we have the performance by devices, performance by country, pages, keyword movement, keyword insights, which is the keyword position distribution. And we also set the meta bar data, which we can see here, so the domain report date and also the two periods, which are the ones which we are comparing. The next step is to merge everything again. And then a lot of code nodes are used to create the HTML. So for instance, here we have HTML to create the KPI cards then also to create the variable, which is inserted at the bottom of the HTML file in the script part, because all of them are also using pagination. As you can see here, it's also possible to switch the page. And if I go to the next page, then only 10 rows are loaded into the DOM, which is important if you want to analyze the website with a lot of pages or impressions or in general where you have a lot of data, then it's not optimal to load all the data into the HTML file and display it because then it will be a really, really long, or let's say a really big HTML file, and there are also some browsers which have a limitation based on the disk space that can be used. That means if you would analyze a page and would put a lot of data into it, most likely it will lag or even break. And then the next step is to merge the data again. So here we have the path icon, the charts, and also the company information, which we can see here in the footer. And then everything gets inserted into the HTML template, as you can see here, we have the title, the path icon. Um, it's also possible to change the styling globally. So if you would change the primary color here, then it would also change all the styles that are using the primary color. And if we have a look into the body, then we can see that we have here the overall traffic, which is also variable, same for traffic by device and so on. So you can think about it that 
we are using the HTML template as a skeleton. And then doing the workflow, we create for every part code, which is actually HTML with the right CSS classes. And then the final output will be a working HTML file with JavaScript as well as stylings. After that, we convert it to a base64 string, and then finally to a file. And in order to be able to send it as an attachment, we have to make a zip file out of it, because if you send an HTML file with JavaScript code or in general, um, a file which will execute code when you open it, it might be that Gmail or also any other email provider will take it as, as spam or even as a security risk. So that means if sending is enabled, then we will send the report. Then we will also save the report in Google Drive and then update the history, so which would be again this part. And in case we added here multiple domains, then the whole workflow will be executed just for another domain. In case you're interested also in other videos where I explain how to set up the bulk data export and also be able to analyze your website data by using N8N as well as the BigQuery node. And I will show this video right now and I will also include it in the description. And in case you do have any questions, feel free to ask me and we will see each other in the next video.